today's tip is about hiring your friends or family as a vendor. For those of you planners who've been doing this for a while, I don't know about you, but I sometimes cringe when a bride tells me, oh, my best friend does this, or oh, my family member does that. And I ask them, well, what's their website? Do they have a business license? Do they have insurance? A lot of these places that I work at, you have to have a business license, you have to have insurance. It's for the protection on both parties, which is a good thing for those of us as planners who try to do things the right way. And it's okay to do things on the side and do it for fun, but when you're having a large wedding and a large production, you want to hire professionals. I had a bride one time who hired her so-called friend as a photographer who was trying to get started in the industry. She did it on the side, just like many of us. I did planning on the side when I had my healthcare job, but I did have a business license and I did have insurance and I did pay taxes. So there's nothing wrong with that, but I wasn't doing huge productions because I wasn't ready for that yet. Anyway, she wanted to give her, her friend a chance and I'm thinking in my head, this is your one and only time for you to get great pictures for your wedding. Why would you allow your friend to take a chance? And here I am as an experienced planner educating you. Are you sure that this is going to be okay? Well, her friend didn't get great pictures. She didn't know how to work her camera. She asked me which flash she should use, which I don't know how to work a camera. I barely take pictures with my cell phone and find time to post them on social media, much less know how to use a professional camera and which flash, I have no idea. I know nothing about lighting. I don't wanna know anything about that because I'm not an expert in that area. So I just kinda of knew from the questions that she was asking me that we were not gonna get great results. So unfortunately, when the pictures came in, the bride was completely ecstatic, like in a negative way and hated the pictures, the lighting was terrible, came to me crying, and what do you do? So I asked the photographer that was in the same studio as me if they could take pictures and give them a good rate to dress back up and do a bride and groom session. So that's what she did. We had her hair and her makeup redone, but unfortunately you can't invite all the guests that came to your wedding and recreate that moment. So it was just really unfortunate that not only did she not have good wedding pictures, but it completely ruined her friendship with that person. So really think about your wedding day and, and your client's wedding day and educate them on hiring professionals and do some research and make sure that these people just didn't roll out of bed, get a camera for Christmas and think that they're going to, well, they call it spray and pray, right? You spray and then you pray that you get good pictures. Well, this person didn't. And you don't wanna be caught in that situation for any of your clients. Did you like this video? If you did, like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can even leave me a comment, and if you have a wedding planning question, send it my way. If you want even more great resources to create a productive and profitable wedding planning business, plus some email updates from me that I only talk about in my email, come on over to my website, angelaprofit.com, and be sure to sign up for email updates. Thank you so much for tuning in to Productive and Profitable Wedding Planning on APTV.